Hi everyone, it's Lisa and welcome to a Proverbs Home. I hope you're doing great. My name is Lisa and if you're new and you're stopping by, I hope you stay with us and you join the family here on a Proverbs Home. I want to thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you for joining my channel and for those who have been with me on this journey for a while, thank you so much. Please don't forget to hit the like button. So, you know, I guess when they when you when you click on the like button, it's supposed to help with the algorithm and others get to see your video. So I would really appreciate that. I hope that you're doing great and that you are being blessed. Today I have something special for you. I am going to be reading a little bit out of my Beatrix Potter book. I've had this book for I think right now 10 years. I've had it for quite a while. This is the complete Peter Rabbit treasure book. I love this book so much. I've read out of it before. One of my favorite books. And I usually take out this book just for the fall. Usually the fall and Christmas is when I take this book out. If not, it sits on the shelf because it means so much to me. This tea is so good. It is really delicious. And it's like a herbal tea. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember the name because it was gifted to me and this is my last bag. But I'm drinking out of my Beatrix Potter cup that I love so much. This is Peter Rabbit says, Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. I'm going to read a little bit out of this Beatrix Potter book. Tale of Squirrel Nutkin. A tale about a tale. A tale that belonged to a little red squirrel and his name was Nupkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry and a great many cousins. They lived in a wood at the edge of a lake. In the middle of the lake there is an island covered with trees and nut bushes and amongst those trees stands a hollow oak tree which is the house of an owl who is called Old Brown. One autumn, when the nuts were ripe and the leaves on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all the other little squirrels came out of the wood and down to the edge of the lake. They made little rafts out of twigs and they paddled away over the water to Owl Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a little sack and a large oar and spread out his tail for a sale. They also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for Old Brown and put them down upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, Old Mr. Brown, will you favor us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? But Nuckin was excessively impertinent in his manners he bobbed up and down like a little red cherry singing, Riddle me, riddle me, rot-tot-tot, a little wee man, in a red, red coat, a staff in his hand, and a stone in his throat. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Now this riddle is as old as the hills. Mr. Brown paid no attention, whatever to Nutkin, he shut his eyes and went to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed away home in the evening. But next morning, they all came back again to Owl Island, and Twinkleberry and the others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of Old Brown's doorway and said, Mr. Brown, Will you favor us with your gracious permission to gather some more nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down, tickling old Mr. Brown with a nettle and singing, Oh, Mr. B, riddle me re, hitty pity within the wall, hitty pity without the wall. If you touch hitty pity, hitty pity, will bite you. Mr. Brown woke up suddenly and carried the mole into his house. He shut the door in Nuckin's face. Presently, a little thread of blue smoke from a wood fire came up from the top of the tree 
and Nuckin peeped through the keyhole and sang, A house full, a house full, and you cannot gather a bowl full. The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks. But Nuckin gathered oak, apples, yellow, and scarlet and sat upon a beech stump playing marbles and watching the door of old Mr. Brown. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows as a present for old Mr. Brown. They paddled over the lake and landed under a crooked chestnut tree on Owl Island. Twinkleberry and six other little squirrels each carried a fat minnow, but Nuckin, who had no nice manners, brought no present at all. He ran in front, singing. The man in the wilderness said to me, How many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought good, As many red herons as grow in the wood. But old Mr. Brown took no interest in riddles not even when the answer was provided for him. On the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of six fat beetles, which were as good as plums and plum pudding for Old Brown. Each beetle was wrapped up carefully in dock leaf, fastened with a pine needle pin. But Nuckin sang as rudely as ever, Old Mr. Brown! Riddle me re, flower of England, fruit of Spain. Met together in a shower of rain, put in a bag, tied round with a string. If you'll tell me this riddle, I'll give you a ring. Which was ridiculous of Nuckin, because he had not got any ring to give to Old Brown. The other squirrels hunted up and down the nut bushes, but Nuckin gathered Robin's pincushions off a briar bush and stuck them full of pine needle pins. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers as they put it down upon the stone. They had stolen it out of Bumblebee's nest on the tippity top of the hill. But Nuckin skipped up and down singing, Hummy bum buzz buzz, hummy bum buzz. As I went over tippity time, I met a flock of bony swine. Some yellow necked, some yellow backed, they were the very boniest swine that er went over tippity time. Old Mr. Brown turned up his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Nuckin, but he ate up all the honey. The squirrels filled in little sacks with nuts, but Nuckin sat upon a big flat rock and played nine pins with a crab apple and green fir cones. On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time. They brought a new laid egg in a little rush basket as a last partening present for Old Brown. But Nuckin ran in front laughing and shouting, Humpty Dumpty lies in the beck with a white counterpane round his neck. Forty doctors and forty rights cannot put Humpty Dumpty to rights. Hmm. Now old Mr. Brown took an interest in eggs. He opened one eye and shut it again, but still he did not speak. Nuckin became more and more impertinent. Oh, Mr. B, oh, Mr. B, Hickamore, Hackamore, on the king's kitchen door. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't drive Hickamore, Hackamore off the king's kitchen door. Nuckin danced up and down like a sunbeam, but still Old Brown said nothing at all. Mr. 
Nuckin began again. Author O'Bower has broken his band. He comes roaring up the land. The king of Scots, with all his power, cannot turn author of the bower. Nuckin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind, and he took a running jump right onto the head of Old Brown. Then all at once there was a flutterment and a scufflement and a loud squeak. The other squirrels scuttered away into the bushes. When they came back very curiously, peeping round the tree, there was Old Brown sitting on his doorstep, quite still, with his eyes closed, as if nothing had happened. But Nuckin was in his waistcoat pocket. This looks like the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Brown carried Nuckin into his house and held him up by the tail, intending to skin him. But Nuckin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two, and he dashed up the staircase and escaped out the attic window. And to this day, if you meet Nuckin up a tree and ask him a riddle, he will throw sticks at you and stamp his feet and scold and shout, Cuck, 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 kirk! The end.